gathering together with the saints. It's not just that, okay, I'm born again, but I'm not going to join the fellowship because I don't want them to identify me as part of the church in Jerusalem. But you see, as they were getting converted, they gathered together with the saints in Jerusalem. This one comes again. He gathers together. They gather together. In fact, in their own case, they're having their Bible study, not only on Monday, every day, every day. Every day, they were studying the word of God together because these people, they, real, they had real salvation and real genuine experience. And because of that, number one, they had grace and service. Number two, they had growth of the saints. Number three, they had the giving of their substance. Number four, they had the gathering together with all the saints. And then number five, the gifts of the spirit. The gifts of the spirit. You know, there are some people, persecution will lessen their prayerfulness. Persecution will lessen their gifts of the spirit. Persecution will lessen the possibility of them manifesting faith and working miracles and then casting out devils and healing the sick. The gifts of healing will be subsiding, will be decreasing because of persecution. In the case of these apostles and these leaders, the gifts of the spirit were still in manifestation in spite of the persecution. Number six, the godliness for sanctification. Godliness for sanctification. Godliness was still there. They didn't say, well, after all, holiness does not pay. We were godly and righteous and holy and persecution came and the pain came and all these problems came. They retained their godliness in sanctification. Number seven, the goal of the Savior. The goal of the Savior was still there. The Lord had a goal for them. Preach the gospel to every creature. And even in spite of all the persecution, they maintained that goal. I pray we'll do that. I said we'll do that. And that's what, that's what explains the great progress despite the great persecution. I come to point number two now. It's gospel proclamation by God's people. Gospel proclamation by God's people. We're looking at uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 and verse 4. It says therefore, therefore. Uh, what's the meaning of therefore? Because they were scattered. Because the wench everywhere was scattered everywhere because of the persecution that arose and then ejected them and drove them away from their homes and their houses and their families. Husbands sometimes separated from wife, parents sometimes separated from children, men are taken and sent, sent to the prison, leaving the family behind, or women are taken and sent to the prison because of the persecution. And as they release them from those prisons, they say, Don't go back to that house again. Some of the people did not even know how to look members of their families but all that did not disturb them they said praise the lord if we don't meet here again we'll meet in heaven and because of that outlook and that foresight and that insight as to their persecution they didn't allow the persecution to weigh them down and make them dejected and make them broken in heart and then they don't know what they're going to do again it says therefore in verse 4 therefore they that was scattered abroad went everywhere and what were they doing Tell me out loud. Preaching the word. And you know, they, they just went on and they kept on preaching the word. Uh, have you seen some people that are, you know, persecuted sometimes? And then you on Sunday you're looking for them, you don't find them, and then you 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 go to their houses. Brother, I didn't see you in the church. You say, Yes, I couldn't come today. I was so sad, I was so sorrowful. See, there's no job, and see, I don't have this, I can't, I can't pay house rent, I can't do this, and you be and I would have added but because because I'm a Christian because I took my stand because I said I will not give bribe I will not do it, see my condition because of persecution that's why they couldn't, they couldn't go to church but here it says in verse 4 that this were persecuted and the pain of persecution was there and the pressure of persecution was there in spite of it all it says therefore they that were scattered abroad they went everywhere they were doing what they ought to do I will do what I ought to do in the midst of the pain, I'll do what I ought to do. In the midst of the persecution, I'll do what I ought to do. You'll do it in Jesus' name. You see, these people, they didn't allow the persecution to lead to, number one, backsliding or lukewarmness. You know, for some people, that's the result. Persecution comes because of that backsliding. Because of that, there's lukewarmness. You know, they were working for the Lord before. And then you say, brother, you're not a worker anymore. We didn't see you at the workers' meeting. We didn't see you. We went out to 
two by two to evangelize. You were not there. Well, I, I want to tell my brother, I'm discouraged because see my life, see this and see this. See my age now, I've not gotten married. And see now we got married, there's no child. And see this now, do this and this and that. And then our landlord, the pressure they are putting on us. And then even my family, my daddy, my mommy, I can't believe what I'm hearing. They're saying, as long as you're a believer, you're reborn again, born again, a person, you're not going to get anything from us. I'm telling you, I'm discouraged. But you see these people, their persecution did not bring backsliding or lukewarmness. You wake up in Jesus' name. Number two, it didn't bring the fear of man. Fear of man. You see some people, they're easily intimidated. Once uh, somebody is persecuting them and that fellow manifests some authority and pressure and power and then put some pain upon them, that thing will generate, it's not just a pain, it will generate fear of man in them. And the fear of man brings a snare. There will be no fear in your heart again. Because Jesus said, don't be afraid what man can do. But you fear God who can kill the body and then send the soul to hell. But you will fear God, you will not fear man in Jesus' name. Number three, they need to allow the posture to lead them to murmuring and complaining against God and against the apostles, against the pastor, against uh, you know the leadership in the church. See now, it's because uh, they preach this holiness and this sanctification. Look at uh, my life now. It is because they said this and this and we're practicing this. See what, um, what I came to now. They didn't allow any of those things to hinder them. They remained in the Lord. We're going to remain in the Lord. That persecution or pain or suffering or whatever will not lead to murmuring against God and against the leadership of the church number four, it did not lead to self-centered prayer meetings. Self-centered prayer meetings. You look at some people who say they are under persecution. The only thing they are praying for, oh Lord, protect us. Oh Lord, preserve us. Oh Lord, don't let this happen to us. This is too much. How can we bear this? Don't let us die by the way and help us to hold on till the end. Uh, self-centeredness. And then all the self-pity prayer meeting. But they went out. They said, forget about yourself. Forget about your pain. Forget about your persecution. And then reach out to other people. That's what he did. That's what we are going to do. I said, that's what we are going to do. That's what you in particular, that's what you are going to do in Jesus' name. You know, I look at these uh, people, all the apostles and all the members, they need a lot of the persecution to make them modify or adulterate the message. Because you see, they, they want, it's not just the preaching the people persecutors were against, they, they were particular against something. So don't mention the name of Jesus. You can teach morals, you can teach people to do good, you can teach people not to commit sin, you can teach them the law of Moses, you can teach them the Ten Commandments, you can teach them to make the nation better, clean up the state. You can tell them to, you know, do good to their neighbors, only don't mention the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, and the salvation that the name of Jesus, only the name of Jesus gives us salvation. That's what you want to hear. But these people did not modify the message, adulterate the message just because of persecution. You see what persecution does to do some people? It will make them drop sound doctrine. It will make them drop holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. It will make them drop their conviction what they were preaching before. They will still be preaching, but the preaching of shallow, it will be hollow. There will be the real meat of the world will not be there. And this paper number six, they need to allow the persecution to lead them to compromise and friendship of the world. Okay, well, let's uh, let's negotiate. What is it you don't like in our preaching? What is it you don't like in our church? What is it you don't like in our presentation? Okay, this, this, and they're alright. Uh, so once I take care of that, everything, they say everything will be alright. You can go to church and they don't allow your church to be too different from other people. All this come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Drop that one. All this friendship of the world, this enmity of God, drop that one. All this, this, and that, drop that. Once you drop that, and you can compromise. You can negotiate with us. Everything will be alright. They need to allow the persecution to make them negotiate with the enemy. You will nego not negotiate with the enemy. And then they need to allow it to make them forsake the narrow way that leads to heaven and then to go 
go in the broad way that leads to destruction and hellfire. You see, these people, they remain faithful to the Lord. And it wasn't just a few people, all of them. Look at that chapter 8, verse 4 again. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, and I'm reading there from verse 4. It says, um, therefore they that was scattered abroad went, how did, where did they go? Everywhere preaching the word. That's what you see in the word. That's the pattern left for us, and that's the model left for us. That's what we are going to do. Look at Psalm 68 and verse 11. Psalm 68, and I'm reading here from verse 11. In Psalm 68, verse 11, it tells us, uh, it still continues the model. It says, The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. The Lord gave the word. That's the Old Testament. You, you come to the New Testament, the Lord Jesus Christ gave the word. What's the word he gave? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what he said. What, what word did he give? He said, All power is given unto me, both in heaven and on earth. He said, Go ye therefore into all nations, but teaching them them and baptize him in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching him to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And he said, Lo, I am with you always to the end of the world. The Lord has given the word already. And then it says, Great was the company of those that published it. If you are not there, it should not be great. If you are not there, it should not be great. It's when everybody comes together. The brothers are there, the sisters are there, the, young, the youths are there, the teenagers are there, the children are there. Children Children are talking to children and the youths are talking to the youths uh, to the youths and then everybody is touching every life somewhere then it says the Lord gave the word and great was the company of those that published it or oh, some people are publishing that word face to face one on one and you are talking to somebody about Jesus about salvation about repentance about heaven about Jesus being the only way a woman is talking to a woman there a man is talking to another man there a student is talking to another student there or sometimes it's on the phone sometimes it's with the email we're sending messages out by email and they were saying that there is the way what key they're in we're saying you must repent believe on the lord jesus christ you must do it now and when you need to ask jesus to come into your heart a mighty change a great change will take place other people they're doing it uh, you know with uh, a skype and you know you can see the other person on the other side all methods you can use great was the company of the people people that published it were going to do it nobody can complain today that i did not you can do it by phone you can do it by text you can do it by email you can do it by you know all these messages that are recorded audio mp3 is there and video dvd is there you can send to people and just connect them one way or the other even the bible study we're having now you know you can tell your friend your friend says i'm not i don't know how to come to the bible so that place is too far you say you can on your phone you can locate the bible study and then you can scroll this and do that and, and you'll be hearing the bible study we can do this now in various ways and then television is there radio is there we will do it i said we will do it it says the lord gave the word the lord has given the word already and it says great was the company of the people that published it when we were looking at luke chapter 8 you see what jesus told this man after he got to well, luke chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 30 from verse 38. Luke chapter 8. We're looking at verse 38. Luke chapter 8, verse 38. It tells us in verse 38, it uh, says concerning this man, now the man out of whom the, the devils were departed, besought him that he might be with him. And Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house and show how great this God has done unto thee. He was a new convert, he just received this miracle of de devils, demons being cast out. He just became free just a few minutes uh, before this time. And this new convert, Jesus told the new convert, return to thine own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him because of the impact of that man this is the impact you are going to have 
This is the result your preaching is going to have. That you tell the people they become so excited. And then when the time comes, they want to receive that Jesus as their personal savior. Look at John. That's about a man. But let's see a woman now in John chapter 4. You see, this is not a work we leave to only to the men. This is a work that the women have to get involved in. Because it says the Lord gave the word. And great was the company of the people that published it. The men and the women and the boys and the girls and the young and the old in John chapter 4 reading from verse 28 John chapter 4 verse 28 it says the woman then left her water pot and went away into the city and says unto the men the woman said unto the men it is not even one-on-one -on -one now it just blasted everything out and, and shouted everything on the top of her voice and all the men were listening come see a man which told me all things that ever I did again this is a new convert she just met the Lord in fact you know the whole story when Jesus said go and call your husband and she said I have no husband and Jesus says you said well because you've had five and now the one you are staying with is not your husband and then she said I perceive that you are a prophet our, our fathers worshipped in this mountain and ye Jewish people says the Jerusalem you ought to worship and Jesus says salvation is of the Jews but I'm telling you the time now is when men shall not worship in that mountain or this mountain but the people that worship shall worship him in spirit and in truth and then well she said when the Messiah comes when Christ comes he will tell us the truth and Jesus said I that speak to you I am he that converted her she gave her life to the Lord you are the Messiah you are the Christ I bow I surrender I give myself unto you it was at that same time now she left her water pot and then went to the city and told the men in the city come it's not this the Christ and they went out of the city and came unto him now this a woman became converted and that same day of conversion she kept going to tell other people you have been converted now for one week for one month for six months for one year for five years are you telling people you must tell people I said you must tell people the Lord will stir you up he already gives you the knowledge he gives you the light he gives you the message it's just to open your mouth don't worry about their response whatever their response will be just open your mouth and tell them he saved me he changed my life he turned me around he forgave my sin he transformed my life what he has done for me he will do for you he will do for them look at the results in verse, uh, the verse in, in verse 39 and many of the Samaritans many of the Samaritans, many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman because of the testimony of the woman, because of the preaching of the woman which testified he told me all that ever I did. So when the, Savior, when the Samaritans were come unto him they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days and many more many more many more believed because of his own word and said unto the woman now we believe not because of thy sin not only because of what you said for we have heard him ourselves and know that this indeed is the Christ the savior of the world look at the impact of that woman one single woman telling all those people 